Today is a monumental day for comic book fans as Action Comics number 1000 is released. That's right, the series that gave us Superman after 80 years is finally hitting issue 1000. Something that has never happened in American comics before. This is something truly historic and many of you might be thinking to yourself, you know what, I've never really read a Superman comic. Maybe now is the best time to start, and that's great! However, it might not be as simple as you think. What are you talking about? It's Superman! Truth, justice, the American way, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's all basic stuff! We know Superman, I can start reading him any- What the heck is that? Who is that kid? Yeah, see, if you want to start reading, awesome! But there's a tad bit of backstory you might want to know before you begin. So that's why I'm here today. On Geekery 101, we give you short, quick introductions to help you indulge in your new geeky obsessions. And today, in honor of Action Comics number 1000, we're going to give you a quick rundown of what you need to know to start reading The Man of Steel, as well as a few recommendations about where to begin. In fact, if you check the description down below, you'll even find a link to Amazon where you can pick up the book that we're recommending today, and if you buy that or anything else on Amazon, as long as you start by going through that link, we'll get a little bit of the profits. It's a great way to treat yourself and to help this channel at the same time. But okay, what do you need to know to start reading Superman? Well, the simplest answer to all that is to just say Superman and Lois are married and they have a son named John who is learning how to become a hero under the tutelage of his father. There, that's pretty simple. But if you decide you want to read the lead up to John's introduction and what his deal is, that's when it gets a little complicated, so hopefully I can make this as painless as possible. To start, let's go back seven years. DC sales were kind of low and they needed a big change to grab everyone's attention, so they completely rebooted their universe, started all over again, and called it the New 52. Now this meant that the history we had experienced with these characters was gone. In fact, DC said that in the New 52, these heroes had only been around for five years, meaning that the bonds and connections that they had built up over decades with each other were gone. And for Superman, that meant that he was now a much younger character, and not only was he not married to Lois Lane, she still had no idea that he was Clark Kent. And that's not all, they even tried to quote unquote, update and modernize Superman's personality. They thought, oh the big blue boy scout, that doesn't work in our modern society. So much like his new metallic suit, Superman himself became edgier and harder. The New 52 Superman was still trying to figure things out, which often led to him doubting himself and acting more angsty, which was not a common trait of the old Superman, and he also acted more aggressive, more standoffish. Heck, they even hinted at one point that he had tried to kill Lex Luthor by attempting to burn his face off. They did this because they thought this new version of Superman would speak to the modern audience. Guess what? It didn't. Yeah, audiences didn't really like this new Superman. They missed the old Boy Scout, and they really missed him and Lois together. Nobody wanted to sit around while these two played Will They Won't They for another three decades before Lois finally figures out who is behind those glasses. So DC decided to kill off the new 52 Superman. Literally. They said that after the battles he had fought recently, many of them changing his own powers and pushing him further than he'd ever gone before, his body was starting to break down. It couldn't take this pressure anymore, and Superman exploded into a burst of light. In fact, they didn't just take out Superman, they took Lois Lane with him. She received some of Superman's powers when he exploded, and so she decided to use these powers to fight crime as Superwoman, and that lasted for about a week before those powers kind of caused her to explode as well. So now we had a DC Universe without Superman or Lois Lane. Or so we thought. You see, when the New 52 happened, it wiped out the old DC Universe. All those characters and stories that we had read, they were all gone. Except for Superman. 
Even the destruction of his own reality can't stop the Man of Steel. Because as the universe was being wiped out of existence, a servant of Brainiac picked up several cities to preserve them, and Superman and Lois just happened to be in one of those cities. After escaping, they attempted to return to their world, only to find everything was now different, and there was already this new Superman and Lois. So they changed their names, moved into a small farmhouse, and lived quiet lives as they raised their son for 10 years. However, when the New 52 Superman died, the original Clark Kent realized someone had to step up. The world always needed a Superman, so it was time for him to come out of retirement and don the big red S once again. And he wasn't the only one to slip out of the shadows. Lois even went undercover at the Daily Planet pretending to be her New 52 counterpart. But why didn't Clark Kent do the same? Why did he still have to live in secret? Well, because you see, the New 52 Superman, before he died, got into a little bit of a pickle. His secret identity had been revealed to the world, so while Lois could try and slip into the role of the New 52 Lois Lane, Clark had to remain hidden because everyone now knew that Superman was Clark Kent. At least they thought they did until a mysterious second Clark Kent appeared. Although I guess at this point he's the third Clark Kent. Listen, there's now a new Clark Kent running around. This new Clark Kent said that he let Superman pretend to be him when he went on a mission, and because of that, everyone thought that Superman was Clark Kent, but he wasn't really, letting the world accept this and go back to assuming that Clark Kent and Superman were two different people. Except, of course, for the real Clark Kent and Lois Lane, they knew that something was up, so they decided to investigate this mysterious Clark Kent, and eventually they got to the bottom of it discovering that the new Clark Kent was actually Mr. Mixie's Yes Spitlick, an imp with reality-altering powers from the fifth dimension who had been a constant thorn in Superman's side, popping up and playing games with him every few months. Which, in all honesty, doesn't sound that bad, but imps with reality-altering powers tend to play games with really high stakes, like all of space and time. However, the last time that he tried to pop up and play the game, he was kidnapped by the mysterious figure known as Oz, who was later revealed to be Superman's dad, jor -El, but that's a whole other story that we're not going to go into today, and he sat in Oz's jail cell waiting for Superman to come and save him. Except that at the time, Superman was trapped outside of time and space himself, and then he was lost in this brand new New 52 universe, so yeah, old Mixie wasn't exactly his biggest priority. So Mixie's Yes Spitlick eventually found a way to break out of Oz's prison, and when he finally found his way into this new reality, he was mad. He was looking for revenge because his hero Superman didn't come to save him when he needed him. So he decided to play one more game with Superman, with the life of his son on the line. And at the end of this game, he tricked Superman and Lois into erasing themselves from reality so that they could then be replaced by the new 52 versions of their characters. So in other words, Mixies erased the old Superman and Lois yet again, only for them to be replaced once again by their younger counterparts, just like what happened when the new 52 was created. Except that this time, something unexpected happened. This time, the love that Clark and Lois had for each other and their son pulled them back. They might have lost their bodies, but their souls, their energies, whatever you want to call it, it stuck around and refused to be erased as it forced its way back into this reality, creating a brand new version of Superman and Lois that was now a merger of the classic and the New 52 versions. But it wasn't just the characters themselves. It merged both of their realities. It took the history of the original DC Universe and the history of the New 52 Universe and shuffled them together like a deck of cards, which meant this Superman was no longer a visitor from a lost universe. He was this universe's version of Superman, and he and all the other heroes had no longer been around for only five years, they had now existed for decades. And yes, Superman had worn the metallic New 52 outfit, but he had also worn the trunks, the mullet, the crazy electric blue outfit. All of it was canon again, 
and Clark and Lois weren't brand new work acquaintances anymore. They had once again met decades ago. They did the whole will they won't they thing for years. They got married and had their child. They moved into a small farmhouse where they raised him for a couple years before returning to action. Everything from the original Superman history was the same, but he was no longer a stranger in this reality with the rest of the Justice League looking at him and saying, who are you? You're not the Superman I know. That guy blew up. He was now the one true Superman of this world. So in other words, if you pick up a Superman comic today, what you need to know is... He and Lois are married and they have a kid. Wow! Seems like I just went a long way to just sum that up in one sentence. Why would I do all of that? Why would I give you all of this information that you don't really need to know to start reading brand new books? Well, because we always end Geekery 101 by giving you a recommendation of where you can start reading these characters we give you something recent that you can pick up and read for a couple of issues that will get you all caught up to the current series. And for the recommendation I'm going to make today, yeah, you kind of need to know about the whole Superman from another universe, New 52 Superman blowing up craziness, because it started before all of that had been resolved. My recommendation today is Volume 1 of the Peter J. Tomasi Patrick Gleason Superman Rebirth series. Peter J. Tomasi has written Superman for nearly 50 issues, and while other writers worked on this modern day version of Superman, none of them really captured him as well as Tomasi. He didn't just introduce us to Jonathan Kent as Superboy and make him a great fun character that has captured the excitement of a new generation of readers, he also came in here and said, I know what makes Superman Superman. Yeah, remember how I said DC1 makes Superman edgier? Yeah, it's not just their comics either, their movies, their video games, they all seem almost ashamed of Superman. Like the people at DC and Warner Brothers for years have desperately been trying to say, Nuh-uh, this isn't your daddy, Superman. And Peter J. Tomasi is the guy who came in here and said, Uh, my daddy's Superman was awesome, and I want that again. I want a Superman who gives a heart-touching speech about protecting and helping others. I want someone who isn't jaded and still finds hope everywhere he turns and finds ways to pull off the impossible, but then tells us that each of us have the ability to do the same. And I want a guy who punches a robot on the moon and then takes the time to pick up the flag and plant it back into place because that's what Superman does. I want that Superman back and that's exactly what he gave us. And you know something? It was incredible. He pulled it off marvelously. He told the world this is why Superman is cool, and he got readers who never quite saw that version of Superman to understand that. It was exactly what I had been waiting for, and it's the place I would recommend everyone start reading Superman. And again, if you want to start reading at that book, I've made it easy for you to find. Just click on the Amazon link in the description below. It'll take you to where you can buy that book, either physically or digitally. And remember, if you buy that or anything else from Amazon, as long as you start by going through that link, then we will get a small cut of the profits. So if you want to treat yourself and help us out at the same time, then take a second and do your shopping through us. And if you can't spare any coins, then we understand you can still help us out by following us on Twitter and Twitch at Professor Thorgy and by sharing these videos around the web. Doing that only takes a second and it's the easiest, quickest way to help our channel grow. Thanks for watching everyone. Come back next time.